Hey everyone, Simon here with Top Tennis Training and in this video I want to help you to become a more consistent tennis player in just 10 minutes. Now step one to becoming a more consistent player is having the right mindset. If you're someone who steps out onto the court, this could be for practice or a real match. If you have the goal of hitting a lot of winners, going for the lines, hitting perfect shots, you're going to struggle in becoming consistent day in and day out. Yes, you'll have some really great days where you play amazing tennis. And you beat most of the players you compete against. But you'll also have really bad days where you're losing to players that you should be beating. And you'll have a lot of days in between both. If your mindset when you step out onto the court is, I want to make every single ball, straight away the way you approach the game will change drastically. Instead of going for winners and then costing yourself by making a lot of unforced errors, you'll play that high percentage shot, the one that you know you can make 10 out of 10 times. And by having that mindset, you eliminate a lot of those unforced errors right away just because you have that tunnel vision of I want to make every single ball, it doesn't matter how. I might have to slice the ball, I might have to hit the ball with a lot of net clearance, a moon ball. It doesn't matter what I do, I'm going to make that ball and I'm going to force the other player to miss before I miss. Now by having that mindset, you'll straight away become a more consistent tennis player. Now before we get any deeper into the lesson, if you're serious about improving your tennis, then make sure you have subscribed to the channel, but also you turn on that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know whenever we release a new lesson. Step two to becoming a more consistent player is getting rid of this feeling that you have to be perfect when you play tennis. We often step out onto the court, we have visions of Federer playing, we have visions of Nadal, of Djokovic, all our favorite players, we imagine how they play the game and we try to copy them, we try to emulate them and this forces us into missing a lot of shots because we're trying to be perfect. We're going for that perfect forehand, we're going for that perfect backhand. We feel like we have to play better than we actually do. Often we lose tennis matches because we're trying to play two or three levels above our own level, the one that we know we can be consistent at. And once you get rid of this feeling of, I have to be perfect, it will free up your body, it will free up your mind to actually improvise and hit shots that might look a little bit unorthodox, but will still help you to get the ball back in court. At the end of the day, the main goal in tennis is to keep the ball in play more than your opponent does. And if you can do that, on a daily basis, you'll be a very, very hard player to beat. So now that you have the right mindset, you're ready to move on to more of the technical side of being a consistent tennis player. Now, when we look at the tennis court, we have two main obstacles. Number one is that net. We have to get the ball over the net in order for us to be consistent. And number two, we have to get the ball to dip before the lines. So the first thing we want to do is eliminate the net by having good net clearance. If you think about a player like Nadal, someone who is famous for being so consistent, what does he do when he's playing tennis? He eliminates the net by lifting the ball. If we can eliminate the net, we're taking that first obstacle out of our game and we'll become a much more consistent player right away. So you should almost feel like the net doesn't exist because you're eliminating it by having good net clearance. Now, if you imagine a rainbow, that kind of arc, if we can create this kind of shape when we're hitting from the baseline, we'll become straight away more consistent because we're eliminating that net. Now, in order to lift that ball, I have two main options. The first one is opening the strings, which will help me hit under that ball and lift it. So if I open my strings and I aim for the bottom of that ball now, I can lift the ball really high 
with just a little dink. The trouble with this is it becomes quite easy for the opponent to attack, but you can use this if you're in trouble. Let's say you're on the wide ball, let's say you're on the full run, you can still open the strings just to clear the net and make sure that you get the ball back in court. But the more aggressive option and the one we should be aiming for more often than not is to brush that ball from low to high, which will also produce that top spin. So the first obstacle is the net of course, and the second one is getting it to dip before the lines. So by using good amounts of topspin, we'll get the ball to dip before the lines. So I'm brushing up the back of the ball, and I'm using that low to high swing, which will help me to then get that net clearance and the ball to dip before the lines. So aggressive spin, a lot of margin, and I feel like I can make 100 balls out of 100 if I hit the shot in that kind of way. Now something else that will help you to produce more spin is that leg drive. So making sure that you get under the ball with your legs. It just doesn't matter the stance. It could be the neutral, the open or the semi-open. You're trying to sit down prior to actually making contact. So by loading the legs, I'm now lower than that point of contact. I can then brush up. I can explode up into the ball using that ground force. And I'm using that loading and unloading to create that low to high swing with my legs, along with the racket. The next step in becoming a more consistent tennis player is your tactical intentions when you're actually playing. So if we go back to the two main obstacles, we have the net and we have getting the ball to dip before the lines. If I'm someone who plays down the line a lot, what happens is by going down the line, I'm going over the highest part of the net because the middle of the, the net is the lowest point, but I'm also hitting into the least amount of space. So if I mistime that down the line shot just a little bit, a fraction late, the, the ball's gonna go into the sidelines and I make an error. But if I hit around 80% of my shots cross court, what happens is I'm hitting over the lowest part of the net, I'm also going into the most amount of space. So if I hit the ball slightly late, the ball still goes in the court, it just goes in the middle. So my margin is much greater when I hit cross court. Not to mention also the recovery. When you're going down the line, you have a lot more space to recover to get into a good position, but if you go cross court, your recovery is then much less. So cross court is the higher percentage shot in tennis, and this is why we should aim around 80% of our shots cross court. So next time you play tennis, practice going cross court, and you'll see how much more consistent you'll be just by that slight adjustment. Another way for you to become a more consistent player is to use a method of finding the ball and then accelerate. Often we make errors because we're speeding up too quickly before that point of contact. And what happens is we lose control of the racket angle at a point of contact. Now the most important part of any tennis stroke is that contact point. I can do everything perfect in the backswing. I can look like Roger Federer. But if my contact point is wrong, if my strings open up too much, or if my strings are close to the ground, if the angle isn't right, the ball isn't going to go in. So I can be perfect here and do that, and the ball goes into the ground. And on the flip side of that, I can do everything wrong in the preparation. I can make a crazy swing like this, but if my contact point's right, I can still get the ball in. So find the ball and then accelerate will help you to really eliminate those unforced errors because you'll have much cleaner contact points. So next time you play, find that contact point. Don't feel like you have to rush this swing or speed up too quick. Feel like you're finding that ball and then accelerating. Find the ball, then accelerate. If you can do this, you'll see a difference right away in that quality of your contact point and you'll eliminate a lot of those unforced errors. The next step to becoming more consistent is your targets. Where are you actually aiming within that cross court or down the line exchange? Now you might be hitting cross court a lot and still missing, but where are you aiming when you go cross court? So if I'm aiming for this green coin, I'm, I'm aiming for the corners, I'm still going to miss a lot of shots because my margin is very slim. 
it's still a high risk shot even though it's cross court but if i aim for this red cone which is five feet from the baseline and five feet from the single sideline that will make a lot of margin for my shots now so creating those margins going for those bigger targets feeling like you're eliminating the lines by not going for them you don't have to hit the lines to hit a great shot this kind of shot with a lot of spin and a lot of neck clearance will bounce here but push the player way behind the baseline if I hit it correctly. So if I hit my shot around this red cone, it's still a very good shot. So a brief overview. Firstly, we have the mind, having the right mindset, stepping out onto the court with one goal in mind, which is to make every single ball. Step two is eliminating that feeling that you have to hit perfect shots. Getting rid of that feeling like, I have to hit everything perfectly to be a good tennis player. Your goal is now I want to make every single ball however it looks. Then we're going to eliminate the net by lifting the ball with a lot of net clearance and we'll also eliminate the lines by hitting with good topspin. Then we're going to go cross court 80% of the time because this is the higher percentage shot compared to down the line. Then we're going to find the ball and accelerate so instead of accelerating too early we're finding that ball and then speeding up the racket. So slow to fast and then we also have aiming for bigger targets. So there you have it, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope this will help you to become a more consistent tennis player. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you click the like button, subscribe to the channel as well, of course, and turn on that notification bell. Now, if there's any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave them in the comment section and also share this video with anyone who would benefit from watching it. This might be your training partner, someone who you want to go out and work on being consistent with. Now they have to be on the same page as you, so make sure you send it to them they watch this video and you're both uh, training with the same goal in mind. Signing off, Simon from TTT, all the best and see you soon guys. So if my goal is to hit winners and hit the ball quite flat, it's, it's gonna be very hard for me to become consistent day in and day out. But if I'm stepping out onto the court and I'm feeling like, okay, I eliminate the net by lifting it, I eliminate the lines by hitting a lot of spin, now I feel like I can be consistent every single time I play the game. Now if you choose to slice the ball and you want to still keep that consistency and that bigger margin, you can use these two things. First one is opening the strings more prior to contact. So the side of the strings you're gonna hit the ball with, you open it up more to the sky. So on the backhand side, instead of hitting the ball and having your strings quite flat towards the net, you're now getting under that ball and this will help you to produce more underspin, that slice. So by increasing the slice on the ball, you'll increase your margin because now you'll have more control over that shot. When you hit a slice that's very flat, it's hard to control the ball. But if you open the strings and you really cut under that ball, you'll create that underspin and that will help you to increase your margin on that slice. Now on the serve, if you have this mindset of, I'm stepping up to the line, but I'm not going for aces and I'm not going for the lines. I'm going for big targets and I'm going to use a lot of spin on my serve to make sure that I clear that net and I get the ball to dip. So this could be slice or a kick serve. By using those two serves and using them a lot, you'll become a much more consistent server right away.